have a home secretary, on replace my loss, ladies and gentlemen. Today I feel proud to talk about the relationship of the British and the Sikhs and the two world wars. We all have read in the media and the history books that the forces of the British India played a major role in both world wars. Nearly 1.7 million men and women of the Commonwealth, including some 170,000 from the forces of the undivided India, died in the two wars. In the first world war, the strength of the British Indian Army rose to about 1 million, and in the second world war, it was about 2.5 million. In the two world wars, 83,000 turban bearing six soldiers were killed and about 110,000 were badly wounded. They all died or were wounded for the freedom of Britain and the world at large. It must be recorded that during the shell fire, they had no other protective gear but the turban, the symbol of their faith. By the time of the outbreak of the First World War, six, though only one percent of the Indian population, made up about 20 percent of the British Indian Army. <laughs> By the end of the First World War, six were known as the Loyals of the Great War, and during the war, they were often called as the Black Loyals. Sikhs were allowed to use traditional Sikh weapons such as chakras and their own kirpans, known as souls. And it was not uncommon to see the Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib, being carried before the marching Sikh battalions or even on the front lines amongst the battle of Sikh troops. In the World War II, the battle was fought on many fronts. The popular fronts were the Battle of Malaya, the Burma campaign, and the Italian campaign. We salute to Her Majesty the Queen and the British government for giving us a haven to live in this country and giving us an opportunity to show our worth, potential, hard work, entrepreneurship, and sincerity. Incidentally, today is a holy day for the Sikhs. All over the globe, the Sikh community is celebrating the martyrdom day of their ninth Guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur, who sacrificed his life to save the annihilation of the Hindu religion and stop the persecution of the Mughals. He set the concept of human rights about 300 years ago. Thank you very much. Now we will be shown, I think, a video on the two world wars. Thank you very much. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, This earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war. In the summer of 1914, Britain buckled under the strain of war and called for aid across the seas. India answered the call, and first into the fray was the 3rd Lahore Division, who landed in France on the 26th of September 1914. They fought with distinction and great bravery. They 
fought on the land. They fought in the air. And on horseback. When the Sikh soldiers marched, the Holy Scriptures marched before them. And they brought with them their hymns and their prayers. The soldiers set up the very first march. And this is the hospital where all the soldiers of the Indian Army who served on the Western Front were treated. Not just the Sikhs, but the Hindus and the Muslims, and of course the Gurkhas too. It was the band of brothers. The letters home are full of wits and pathos. And although many did return to duty and return home safely to India, some did succumb to their injuries in writing. And those that fell there were cremated on the hills of Albright. And the ashes were scattered in the English Channel. At the end of the war, in 1921, a monument was set up in the hills of Uprighton on the site of the cremation, which is called the Chattery. And this monument still stands today, a testament to their bravery and their service. When the guns fell silent in November 1918, the Sikh soldiers marched through London in the victory parade, their heads held high. Over one million had served in that terrible war. 74,000 men of the Indian Army fell, and more took home their injuries, both physical and psychological. Dr. Rani Ranger, MBA. 
If this film doesn't move you, then nothing will. Home Secretary, the Right Honourable Theresa May MP, First Sea Lord, Admiral Zembalas, Baroness Verma is still held at the Parliament, Minister at the Department of Energy and Climate Change, Deputy High Commissioner Dr. Brinder Paul, Honourable Richard Harrington MP, Lord Singh, Lord Desai, General Martin Smith, MBE, Dr. Lalwani, Mrs. Nina Amin, Mr. Sundar Kandari, Mrs. Tana Nadu of Aid India, and Mr. Roger Pro of Institute of Directors, guests, ladies and gentlemen, and of course my friend Christopher Fennell. Before I speak, I would like you to reflect back on the days of those wars, what kind of conditions these people must have gone through. They didn't have the modern amenities we have. So we really owe a great deal to these people and we must all live up to their ideas. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you all to the British Sikh Association annual dinner. This dinner coincides with the 100th anniversary of the First World War where a small Sikh community made huge sacrifices for world freedom. They fought shoulder to shoulder with the Brits and changed the course of many battles and the outer outcome of the war. As you heard from Dr. Kapoor, Sikhs fought with valor and distinguished themselves in many battles, battlefields and won many medals including Victoria Crosses. The reason, is for, reason for this is very simple. The Sikh religion is based on the principles of human freedom. The Sikh turban was born not to oppress or suppress anyone, but to liberate those who were being oppressed and suppressed in the name of their faith. I shudder to think what the history of India and the world what world would have been had it not been for the supreme sacrifices of Sikh Gurus and their followers. We can rightly be proud of our history and heritage of being saint soldiers fighting only for the just cause. We are fortunate that our Gurus realized even then that if people are suppressed either by religion or state then they would not develop wholesomely and as a result would not be able to contribute much to society other than behave like obedient servant. Today we punch above our weight in every field and have become one of the most respected community in the world. Each one of us is an ambassador of our gurus and we must live up to their ideals of social and political justice in the world. <laughs> the Sikh and India are one and no one should ever try to separate children from their mother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have the Home Secretary as our Chief Guest tonight. <laughs> to remain the longest serving Home Secretary in 50 years speaks volumes about her tenacity and steadfastness. <laughs> we cannot progress or prosper as a country if our streets are not safe and people are living in fear. With her fair and firm approach, the Home Secretary has made us one of the safest countries in the world to live and to grow, go about our businesses unhindered. Home Secretary, when our country welcomes immigrants which do not share our values, then we must work hard to instill British values in them. The very values attracted them to come to us in the first place and which made us a great nation. Where freedom is important, duties are also equally important. 
we have freedom to drive, we must also obey the rules and regulations. Besides, anyone who lives in Britain becomes a part of Britain and must move in the same direction to help build a cohesive society for all concerned. In any case, we now have one country and queen, as a result, have become one. We are also privileged to have Admiral Sir George Zemelis with us and his charming lady, ladies and ladies, with us tonight. The Navy is the biggest arm of our defense forces, as we are an island nation, depend heavily on trade with the rest of the world for our survival. If it wasn't for the Navy, we would not have been able to defend the people of Falklands or help the people of Sierra Leone against the Ebola outbreak. It was an impressive sight watching the first sea law with Her Majesty the Queen commissioning our most powerful and state-of-the-art aircraft carrier, Her Majesty's ship, Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you, Sir George for providing us with the pen of Royal Marine for our entertainment tonight. <laughs> we welcome our own first Sikh peer, who is not here, Baroness Verma, who is the Minister in Her Majesty Government for Climate Change, and we wish her success in her endeavor. We are delighted to have with us the Deputy High Commissioner of India, Dr. Varendra Paul. Like, like us, he's a Punjabi with great sense of commitment to unite Indian diaspora for a loyal and hardworking hard community in Britain, bringing honor to India. In his endeavor, he is he has ably supported by Mr. Sudev Singh Sindhu and Mr. Sanand Goy. They are here tonight. Yeah. We are also honored to have the presence of Richard Hamilton MP, Vice Chairman of the Conservative Party, a close friend of the Prime Minister. He will be reporting to the Prime Minister about our special dinner tonight. We are also have with us special guests from Dubai, Mr. Sunda Singh and Mr. Babal Kandahari. They are a remarkable couple who live up to the Sikh's ideal of seva, service. Their service to mankind will go down in history. Tonight we will recognize their work to make the world a better place. We will also acknowledge the contribution of our Home Secretary to public life and for the difficult and invaluable work she is doing for us. We also like to Acknowledge the presence of Lord Desai, who has an unenviable task of raising funds to have the Gandhiji statue installed in Parliament. So when you see Lord Desai, don't shy away. Come forward and donate generously. It's for a man who liberated us and we are now equal in the world. We will be raising money for the Armed Forces Charity Combat Stress, which is doing a great job in getting people back on track after experiencing the horrors of war. If we forget those who make sacrifices for our freedom, then we will be a nation of an alright jack. Please support the charity in line with the Sikh values of giving. Sikh values of giving. Please, please, with generosity as your money can save lives and make difference to mentally traumatized soldiers. Finally, I must thank the Executive Committee member of the British Sikh Association for their hard work in making this evening possible. There are a group of dedicated people who work very hard to promote the vision of Sikh Gurus for a united mankind. Please give them a big round of applause. And thank you, please, for being so patient and so magnificent audience where I do not feel nervous at all. Thank you.
George Nutt to read a citation to Mr. Surrender S. Kandari, please. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to present a citation for Mr. Srinder Singh Kandari. Mr. Kandari was born in 1948 in India. He was educated in India and graduated with honours from the Loyola College Madras, where he was a student union president. He then went to further his professional education. In 1976, Mr. Kandari came to Dubai to grow the family business, and he formed the Al Dhabi Group. The group today is the leading management services provider in the United Arab Emirates. It has grown to be over 1,500 employees and it has a significant presence in Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Ghana, Europe, and Canada. Mr. Kandari is a vivid golfer, and he is founder member of the Emirates Golf Club, where he was, until recently, the club captain. He is the youngest president of the Automobile Dealers Association, Andhra Pradesh. He is also the Vice President of the Auto Parts Merchants Group, Dubai. Mr. Kandari is the Chairman of the Guru Nanak Darbar Sikh Temple in Dubai, the first Sikh Gurdwara in the United Arab Emirates, which was officially inaugurated and opened to the public for worship on the 19th of January 2012. Mr. Srinder Sikandari has won an award under the category of Sikhs in Seva, which was held in London on the 21st of October 2012. It was organised by the Royal Sikh Awards UK. He has won this award for his contribution to society through means of Seva, which means selfless voluntary service. He is an outstanding individual who has most excellently demonstrated exceptional leadership and vision when helping others by building the first official Gurdwara in the Middle East. Mr. Srinder Singh Kandari was part of the United, Emirates, United Arab Emirates government delegation to the recently held G20 Interfaith Summit in Brisbane, Australia in November 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sundar Singh Kandari. May I invite Mr. Kandari to come to the stage, please, and for the Home Secretary to present the Jewel Award. I'm deeply honoured and also at the same time humbled to receive this coveted award for the Sikh Jewel from the British Sikh Association. I thank Sir Ami Ranger for nominating me to this position of receiving this prestigious award. I owe this award to the Sikhs and Sindhis who live in the UAE and it's their prayers and their support <clears throat> that we could build the first Gurdwara in the UAE. The government of Dubai and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President of UAE and Prime Minister and the ruler of Dubai have been very generous in giving us the land free and we built the most modern Gurdwara in the world. The entire Sikh community of the UAE are profoundly overwhelmed and indebted to the kindness of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed for granting us this land and the noble cause of building a Sikh place of worship. The Gurdwara 
is an architectural distinction. It's built in a hall which can accommodate 3,000 people. It's built over 25,400 square feet, connecting Dubai and the capital of UAE, Abu Dhabi. Sikhism is an important independent religion rooted in oneness and love. Sikh theology encourages a life of spirituality and service. Sikhs maintain a unique identity and believe in absolute equality. Guru Nanak Dev Ji received the spirit of God at the age of 28 and his universal message for all people was there are no Hindus, no Muslims, all are equal and we educated the quality of human, the quality of men and women. I see on the board here, recognizing the human race as one, the slogan of the British Sikh Association. I salute, this is what we believe in and this is what we, what we should do. Why? I once again thank the British Sikh Association, Dr. Remy Ranger, Right Honorable Theresa May, Home Secretary, Dr. Virinder Paul, Admiral Sir John Ramalas, and all the members of the Executive Committee of the British Association, and Mr. Harrington, I, you went to the Gurdwara, we met with this, I remember that. Thank you very much. And I want to thank all the lords and ladies and the distinguished guests who have been gathered here this evening. One last, I have a small token of gift from the UAE, which I want to present to Dr. Rami Ranger on behalf of Dubai. This is some more, is This is an Arabic dog, and Dr. Rami Ranger can share it in Dubai. Very science for the Member of Parliament for Watford and Vice Chairman of the Conservative Party, Mr. Richard Harrington. Home Secretary, First Sea Lord, Dr. Ranger, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it was indeed as an 18 year old boy in December 1977 when I cast my vote for the first time in my life. And it was indeed for the librarian of the Oxford Union. And indeed, it was for you, Theresa, that I voted. And I think you won by one vote, I can't remember. But that was an honour, it's a great honour to have you here tonight. But ladies and gentlemen, as you might be aware, or some of you may know, I am actually Jewish. In fact, it's only someone that's Jewish or an Indian that could actually get away with wearing a jacket like this. <laughs> but I tell you that for one reason, because there are many similarities between our people. And the main one, which is the reason we're here tonight, is charity. And I think it was, um, Ravi told me this uh, once, but it was the Guru Amal Das who said that people should give 10% of their income to charity. And indeed, for the Jewish faith, it was the prophet Maimonides, who about the same time, purely by coincidence, said the same thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I were alive at the time, I would have amended both of those, that 10% of the income should be given to charity, and 10% indeed to the Conservative Party. <laughs> I wasn't here at the time. So, I would ask you to remember that when we ask later to support such an excellent charity, which is the real reason we're here. But thank you, as ever, for inviting me. It's a huge pleasure to be here. And I hope to be invited again. Thank you very much. Here are now the Deputy Indian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Dr. Viranda Paul. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, right Honourable Teddy Sabin, uh, Dr. Remy Danger, uh, Chairman of uh, the British Sikh Association, Honourable Member of the Parliament, uh, Lords, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, on behalf of the Indian High Commission, on this occasion I can give greetings and uh, best wishes to the British Sikh Association and all those who have been associated in putting together this uh, uh, important uh, event. Uh, Sikhism was born in India and today Sikhism is a major religion not only in India but it's a global, uh, a major global uh, religion. Uh, the Sikh community in this great country is uh, 
perhaps the most important, the most uh, prominent and the most visible uh, ethnic minorities. And uh, uh, in, the largest, in the larger context of uh, Indian diaspora, uh, the community here has earned for itself a formidable reputation of being uh, an extremely hard-working uh, community, extremely hard-working uh, citizens. Uh, you have excelled in practically all walks of life. You have made important contributions, extraordinary contributions in practically all of the walks of life, be it uh, business uh, and industry, science and technology, government and politics, sports, education, entertainment. You name the field and uh, you are there occupying uh, high and important positions uh, doing India proud. Uh, so I uh, pay tribute uh, to all British Sikhs in uh, all that, uh, that you have uh, achieved. I thank you all. The speaker is the first Sea Lord and Chief of the Naval Staff, Admiral Sir George Sandellas. Mr. Chairman, Home Secretary, senior and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Well done. I'm pleased to hear that you're still with us. <laughs> On this very special day, this poignant day, I think we are very lucky to be gathered together within the moment of reflection in the sea calendar. May I reflect upon the fact that there may have been a reference to Her Majesty, our Queen's launch of HMS Queen Elizabeth on the 4th of July 2014, but I think that that is a beautiful and special fighting ship. There is more power gathered together in this room than there is in that warship. So reflect upon your collective authority, ladies and gentlemen, you're a very special group of people. And may I also take the opportunity to congratulate uh, Dr. Rani on his latest award as Man of the Year uh, from the Prime Minister. Actually, Rani has won so many awards that he is, by all accounts, moving out of the house to make space for them. <laughs> now, as you know, as you know very well from this evening's references, this year marks the 100th anniversary of the outbreak of the First World War. And so on the 11th of November, I was again proud to represent your Royal Navy at the commemorative remembrance ceremonies. A very timely reminder, as we all know, of the deep sacrifice made, as we saw in the video, not just by the thousands, but by the tens of thousands of Sikhs in both world wars. And let me just briefly remind you, because we haven't done it in quite this way, in World War I, Sikh battalions fought in Egypt, Palestine, Mesopotamia, Gallipoli, and France, and in World War II, Sikh battalions fought in the Second Battle of El Alamein, and in the Burma and Italian campaigns, and, and there's no poignancy here in Iraq, those men, those men who fought and died in the name of freedom are an example to all of us today. Now, Bobby has his own historic connections with both India and the Sikh community. For example, two of our World War II destroyers were called, you guessed, HMS Sikh and HMS Punjabi. We, we dug deep, you know. Those ships served with great distinction. HMS Six battle honours included the Bismarck and Malta convoys. HMS Punjabi was also involved in the Bismarck operation and the Arctic convoys. But in case you haven't noticed, our warehouses are not ashore, they are very largely at sea. And that means we help our hard-working, entrepreneurial, and wealth created Sikh community too. So, your navy, and it is your navy, is out of sight perhaps, but hopefully not out of mind. It's operating globally in support of all of us as we strive for a trade-led recovery from our recession. 
to support our nation to deliver trade, aid and security. And that brings me back to where I started. Today we follow in the footsteps, in the quiet, silent, historic footsteps of those brave Sikhs from India who during two world wars and more in supporting security for our collective peoples and for our nation at home and abroad have sacrificed so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Baroness Sandy Verma of Leicester, the Minister of the Department of Energy and Climate Change. Um, thank you, Home Secretary, Chairman Dr. Dak Rami Range of the British Sixers Association, esteemed guests on the diaspora, uh, on the dais, um, and esteemed guests in the audience. Today is a really um, important day uh, for me because, as somebody who was born in Amritsar, um, in the place where actually we all go to if we're of the Sikh faith or more, or of any faith, it is a reminder of, first of all, a religion that was the first religion to actually say that we need equality amongst men and women. And I'm really proud that I belong and started my life in a religion that looked at men and women as equal in this world. Secondly, I'd like to say that we are a faith that actually does do seva. And all the temples across the UK every day serve Langa. So you can go any day of the week. Nobody ever will go hungry from our Gurdwaras. And I think that is something about the very nature of the way the people of the Sikh community are. Guru Nanak was very clear. There is no point in accumulating great wealth if you don't know how to share it. I'm really pleased you have talked about the contribution of the Sikh community during the two world wars. My grandfather, Captain Mal Singh, was in the first world war, and my father-in-law, my husband's hus uh, father, um, was in the second world war. The Indian community has made a lot of sacrifices during both of those um, wars. And I think it is right that we recognise and remember those sacrifices because without them and their sacrifices, we wouldn't really have enjoyed the great freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy today. The British Sikh community, as the community from the Indian and the Indian subcontinent, is a strong community. It has always fought on the side of right. And I hope collectively, as a community collectively, as we contribute positively to this country, we also remember we have a duty to ensure that those who are less fortunate than us have always got our support. So when we talk about new communities, that we remember once we were a new community. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Citation to the Right Honourable Theresa May, MP, Home Secretary. The Right Honourable Theresa May had a varied education in both private and state sectors. She went on to study geography at St. Jude's College, Oxford University, and she started her career at the Bank of England and the Association for Payment and Clearing Services. Like many committed to their political party, she started out stuffing envelopes for her local Conservative Association before moving on to become a local councillor in the London Borough of Merton. During this time, she held the positions of Chairman of Education and Deputy Group Leader and Housing Spokesman. In 1997, she was elected Member of Parliament for Maidenhead, where she lives and is an active local campaigner. During this time, she joined the Shadow Cabinet and served as Shadow Secretary of State for Education and Unemployment, Shadow Secretary for Work and Pensions, and Shadow Leader of the House of Commons. Between 2002 and 2003, she served as the first female chairman of the Conservative Party. 
in May 2010, she was appointed Home Secretary. And in that capacity, she is leading the government's work to reform policing, secure the borders, reduce immigration, and prevent terrorism. She also served as Minister for Women and Equalities from 2010 to 2012. World Sikh University Vice Chancellor Dr. Sukhbir Singh Kapoor OBE is delighted to present to Right Honourable Theresa May MP an honorary doctorate for her services to the United Kingdom. Thank you. Thank you. this honorary doctorate from the World Sikh University. Thank you very much indeed. I understand that you were the first Sikh University to open in Europe and I'm delighted that Britain is home to such a tremendous institution and I hope that the courses you offer will ensure that as a society we can deepen our knowledge of the world's great religions and that as a country, the Sikh faith can be taught and more greatly understood. I would also like to thank the British Sikh Association and the Hallmark Group for the very special collection of Sikh heritage stamp ingots. I understand that they commemorate significant historical events and personalities in the Sikh faith, and I should enjoy looking at them and learning about Sikhism. We've heard this evening about the immense and important contribution of Sikh soldiers in the First and Second World Wars. But I want to begin by talking about a very special place, the Lord Ashcroft Gallery at the Imperial War Museum. For those who don't know it, it houses more than 180 Victoria crosses from Lord Ashcroft's private collection, as well as the museum's own collection of Victoria and George crosses. Men and women who have carried out extraordinary acts of bravery, fortitude and self-sacrifice are honoured there. The accounts of their heroism revealing great personal courage in the face of danger, moral courage to do the right thing and defend and save others, and enduring courage while under extended periods of unimaginable stress and in the most appalling circumstances. These are heroes every one. When the odds were stacked against them, they acted with great strength and spirit. And notable among those accounts are the Sikh soldiers. Men such as Major Parkash Singh, who in 1943 risked his own life to save those of his fellow soldiers who were trapped in their vehicles while under heavy fire from the Japanese in Burma. Not only did he drive his vehicle straight into the field of danger to rescue wounded soldiers once, but having brought those soldiers to safety, he went back again. This time, recovering a vehicle of wounded men by hooking that vehicle to his, and then towing it to safety, all while under fire from the Japanese. <laughs> Captain Ishak Singh, the first Sikh soldier to be awarded a Victoria Cross in 1921, also in the Ashcroft Gallery, and others besides who are not in the gallery and who were also awarded the Victoria Cross which I would remind you is Britain's highest award for gallantry. We often hear about the reputation of Sikh soldiers, that they are fearless and fearsome warriors, a reputation that has earned them great admiration throughout history. But what is so remarkable at the Ashcroft Gallery is that we can put names, faces and deeds to that reputation. These men were awarded medals for what they did, but there were also many other acts of heroism. Some have been recounted and recorded, and we can still read today about incredible tales of daring. Countless other acts will have gone unknown and unrecognised. This week I will unveil, unveil a memorial plaque in Derby, dedicated to the Sikh soldiers who fought in the First World War. It is right, particularly in this year, when we commemorate the start of the First World War, that we remember them and we pay tribute, tribute to what they did. They left the warmth and comfort of their homes in India to fight on the cold battlefields of Europe, in Africa and the Middle East. 
They endured the horrors of foreign trenches side by side with soldiers from Britain and men from other parts of the Commonwealth. Many of the wounded were tended to and nursed at Brighton Pavilion. Many fell on the wide fields of the Somme, the beaches of Gallipoli, and at Neuve Chapelle. They answered the call to defend us in our hour of need, and it is because of their valour and their great sacrifice that we enjoy the freedoms that we hold so dear today. Throughout history, this country has had a deep respect for the Sikh military tradition and the fearlessness of Sikh warriors, who are taught by your faith to fight boldly against injustice, tyranny and oppression. We are thankful to them as we are the many thousands of Commonwealth soldiers of many faiths and countries, and as we are thankful to the Sikh soldiers who fought so valiantly in the Second World War and other military campaigns, and who serve the British Army today. Their contribution is incalculable, and it will be remembered. Coming together at events such as this gives us a chance to reflect on our shared history, deep bonds and friendship, and the values that the Sikh community embodies. Compassion, justice, the ethos of hard work and earning an honest living, and respect for all people and all faiths. For more than 100 years, Sikhs in this country have been making a rich contribution to the British way of life. We see that contribution in charity and the help and assistance that Sikh communities are providing to people who are deprived and disadvantaged in this country and in many other countries around the world. Earlier this year, through the charity Kalsa Aid, Sikh volunteers distributed sandbags and helped bring essential supplies to those caught up in the floods in Berkshire, Surrey and Somerset. British Sikhs are thriving in medicine, law, business, entrepreneurship, media, sport, public service and so many other areas. And I can also tell you that the Home Office, at the Home Office, we have an active and very diligent Sikh association who make sure that the Sikh faith, culture and heritage is honoured and shared with Home Office staff. As the chairman of that association has said, British Sikhs are proud to be British, just as they are proud to be Sikh. So I'm delighted to be at this dinner, to celebrate British Sikhs and all that you do for this country and all that you have done throughout history. I want to thank you, and I want to say that I hope we can continue to learn from you and all that you have achieved and all that you value. You set a fine example for many people to follow. Thank you. Thank you, May I now invite the British Sikh Association Executive Committee to come to the dance floor to present a cheque to Tim Braun of the Charity Combat Dr. Manfred Gulati, CEO of Life and Health, to make a short address. Members of Parliament, my lords, uh, honoured guests and ladies and gentlemen, it is a joy for me to be amongst all of you for this moment, on this momentous occasion and to see say to you a very warm Satsuri Akal, which means may the truth always prevail till eternity because it always does and lead you to eternal wealth, abundance, equanimity with nature and oneness with the universe. My grandfather, who was uh, a captain in the British Army and fought of the Burmese border, would have, uh, I mean, he was a very religious man, but he would have, in a very jovial manner, said, Sansi Akal, we have a copy to all. As CEO of Life Health, I am deeply grateful to the British Sikh Association for inviting me to deliver this address on behalf of the main sponsor, Laika Mobile and Laika Radio, headed by our dynamic chairman, Mr. Sabaskar Aligarh who has steered this amazing organization to where it stands at the present moment with 20 million customers 
and of course, that's what it is indeed about to be a Punjab. Thank you ever so much for giving me the opportunity to address you today and have a fantastic rest of the evening from all of us at Laika family and on table 9. Thank you. Yeah. 